and go out of bounds because if we go out of bounds, we start causing headaches for um, the uh, integrity of the grants program. So we really appreciate Simone's um, presence here today. If I do say something I'm not meant to, she's going to absolutely jump in, which is fantastic help. Okay. Um, so thanks, Simone. My pleasure. Uh, and then um, other housekeeping, I can't answer questions on specific submissions. So I really hope um, when you present a question, frame it in a way that it's more generic and I will do my best to answer. Uh, I need to stick to what's in published guidelines um, and publicly available information in terms of responding to you. Um, and I'm more than happy, I'll answer questions by raising raising hands. Um, I'll also keep an eye on the chat. So if you don't feel like you can dive in and ask a question, please do so on the chat and we'll go back and forth a bit between the two of them. Um, we're really um, grateful to Homelessness New South Wales for hosting a briefing specifically for our Aboriginal led uh, services who are partnering with us in this work. Um, it is great to have a smaller group of people so that we can um, chat through things a bit more thoroughly um, and possibly with a, a slightly different take on things. So thank you for making the time to come today. We really do appreciate it. And thanks to Homelessness for hosting us. Um, if everybody's comfortable, we will be recording the session, which will then be made publicly available as we do with all our items um, and interactions. The other um, uh, activity we're going to do to help make all this information available across the board is that um, if there are questions today that are new to us or that we haven't answered in our frequently asked questions um, online, we will add that question in. If it's a question that's similar to what we've already got in those FAQs, um, we, we won't update them, but we will make sure the topics that are covered today are represented in those frequently asked questions. So if you miss something today, um, there's a couple of ways to catch up on it. Um, if you've got um, colleagues or other organisations that wanted to hear or participate today and couldn't, there's a couple of ways they can um, get in contact with us. So. Um, Sky has very helpfully just put in the chat the two sets of guidelines. So I'll run through introducing what we're talking about today and then we'll just launch into questions if that's okay. Um, so we have um, through the Smarty Grants process, we have two grants running concurrently, grant programs. One is both within the Homelessness Innovation Fund. So the Homelessness Innovation Fund was set up um, following the recent budget in June. Um, it's $100 million allocated over the next four years towards um, progressing innovative ideas um, as we move through lots of um, changes in our homelessness services and moving towards recommissioning in June 2026. One of the um, programs focuses on reforming temporary accommodation and that's particularly our crisis accommodation where we primarily use um, commercial providers for motel and hotel accommodation. That's the first grant. Um, it's really focused on that. Um, the assessment criteria for it are really directed towards reducing either demand or cost in that area or improving the outcomes that people who are in that type of accommodation can get um, through improved or increased support. The second one is our wide open gate, which is our service reform and innovation. Uh, the Minister, as well as Homes New South Wales, really wanted a, a one stop shop for all those fantastic ideas or projects or um, more out of the box things that you want to either have a go at, trial, prototype, test out, or you're ready to go with an idea. So the idea is that it's not very specific because we do want it to be a wide open gate. We get lots of contact requests, emails um, through various parts of Homes New South Wales and it can be quite confusing for organisations to know who to come and ask if you've got a great project idea. The idea of this um, grant program, the Service Reform and Innovation, is to make one entry point, we'll assess it according to the guidelines and then you'll, you'll understand that there's one entry entry point now for those programs. So we have um, $30 million in funding across the two streams, so $30 million total across the two streams there for this year. We are doing three assessment pieces, so the round, the grants stay open until, um, until next year, um, so for the 12 months, uh, and we are assessing them, we're having three rounds of assessment so that we can get money and projects happening quicker. We didn't want to wait until June next year to start 
um, getting these things up and going. So as I said, there's an assessment round that starts through November. That means we're working very hard to be able to make initial decisions by the end of November um, and so that um, we can work through the contracting and pieces through December. There's another round in um, February next year and then again in May. So uh, it means that if you submit applications, um, proposals through, um, if it arrives on the 1st of November, you haven't missed out, it will just be assessed in that February round. Um, you can submit as many proposals as you want to either or both streams. There's no limits on the number of proposals or the similarity of proposals, just to get your ideas in. We've chosen the Smarty Grants process because we think it's a very easy process. We do not want organisations spending lots of time on external consultants. We don't want this to be where the best tender writer wins. We want it to be the best idea that um, gets the money to move forward. Um, and the last piece is that um, any money received, it's not recurrent funding, it, would, it does need to be spent within the 12 months of receiving. So that's kind of my opening covering everything. Um, I'll, I'm more than happy to open it up to questions now. Um, reminding you, I can't answer specific uh, applications, but if you can sort of um, phrase your question in a way that sounds not specific, then I will do my best to be able to answer it. Is there something you wanted clarification around? Um, which stream to put a proposal into? Suzanne, you're first up. Good on you. Yeah. I guess it's it's around the reforming temporary accommodation and the way yes. that it's modelled, particularly like the the purpose is is try to get more echoes into the sector, give them an opportunity. You know, this twelve months is sort of you know different ways to do different things apart from us that are currently contracted, you know, for homelessness. But the innovation, you know, the temporary reforming temporary accommodation, I guess, we need some clarity around that. Well, I would, because it seems like it is targeted for those that already have accommodation and want to adapt it, change it, move it from maybe general accommodation to, you know, crisis or transitional accommodation. Therefore, it limit it, limits the opportunities for ACOs in that stream because they currently don't have properties or housing to make into transition. I think maybe moving forward for the next things, there should be some consideration given to adapt if you want to try and get more housing providers to to take up that option as well if you know what i mean do you understand yeah no what I, mean? I think it's yeah they're very good points suzanne and i i think um there's a couple of things we're trying to balance one is that we do want um, smaller providers we want aboriginal led providers to really have lots of different opportunities to um, grow um, and be supported to grow uh, we're balancing that with for temporary accommodation we need changes really quickly so where we do have some providers, and we do know there are Aboriginal-led providers that may have accommodation that could be used in a different way, or not just that it's um, through a CHP or SHS funding, but maybe it's available through other um, mechanisms, that if it's available um, and can be used in a way, um, go for it. Uh, but we, we did really want changes now, and so this... Um, reforming temporary accommodation is a mechanism to get quick changes um, and to see how they go while we're in this high crisis period. And we hope that both through the Service Reform and Innovation Fund and in following years of the Homelessness Innovation Fund that we can um, have ones that are more targeted or more helpful in terms of those longer term plans. Other questions or Suzanne, if you've got follow up, you're welcome to We're all very quiet today, which is OK. I mean, yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it is only 12 month funding as well. You yes. know, we, we don't have a lot of um, echoes within the sector either, you know, that sort of do the transitional and, you know, crisis accommodation like we do as a existing provider. So, yeah, I just like, I think it would help to have probably the sector, you know, have a bit more of a lead up conversations about 
innovative ideas, what they could do, that sort of stuff, particularly they're coming in cold into this opportunity. So, you know, just to have more of a roundtable discussion about what how things would work because it's all new to a lot of people in the sector. I'm a big supporter of getting more echoes into the sector, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I Fantastic. think it's that yep. sort of information that is needed to the sector as well is to help them, you know, become innovative, understand what they can do and, and know what they, you know, in, in that bigger thing, particularly for the temporary accommodation side. Yeah, and I really encourage you, um, uh, there's two parts to that. We have the two grant programs and the service reform and innovation one is open to if you want to trial something, if you want to get some extra support to model something out, you can apply for support to do that in that second grant program. So again, it doesn't have to be a completely thought out, um, every box ticked, you've got DAs all in for the second, for the service reform and innovation stream. That is a case of if you think you've got a good idea, but you just need a bit more support to work out the details of it, put in a request in that second stream so that you've got 12 months um, maximum. It might not even take that long. It might be that you get some um, thinking progressed and some modelling done and that you're ready to apply later in the, in the year. So for that February or um, May reviews. So do feel free where you've been thinking, how do we step up a level with the service provision? How do we integrate the different bits we've got better? Do please apply in the Service Reform and Innovation Fund for some support and grant money to be able to do that work. Um, we know that sometimes for our, particularly our smaller organisations, it's hard to think, how do I get to the it's hard work and sometimes expensive work to go, how do I get to the next level? How do I integrate um, the multiple service streams I have or how do I um, propose a collaboration with some others in my area, very open to those being applied for through the service reform and innovation. For the temporary accommodation, um, it, even a couple of beds, particularly in our more regional areas, a couple of beds are worthwhile doing. Um, that every little bit helps. We do really want to move it away from our commercial providers, particularly if we could be giving that money to NGOs, we would love to be doing that more than commercial providers. Um, it keeps the money in the system, it helps you do other things. Um, so for the temporary reforming temporary accommodation grant, the grant itself is there to um, perhaps prepare a property to be able to um, host clients um, or to um, look at the service delivery model for it. Uh, we do expect that in those models proposed that you would propose charging us a nightly rate. So where we book somebody into TA, just like we do now into a motel, where we book somebody in to use your accommodation, uh, we would then pay a nightly rate. And in your proposal for that, you just need to say what the nightly rate would be, and that's outside of the grant funding. So it's in addition to the grant funding, and it's based on how often we um, book somebody in. Hey, Kim, it's Dale Towns here. Sorry, guys, I've got my camera off because I'm, I'm actually not in the office. Um, I'm at an appointment and you really don't want to see my face right now. So let me just say oh. that. <laughs> um, can I just ask you a quick question? In yeah. relation to in relation to the TA, right, you guys are really looking at getting it getting out of accessing motels, right? Really. But what happens in communities where and tell me if I might be deep in you might say Dale can't answer that, it's too close to or whatever, you know, your probity question, but so pull me up if you need to. But in communities where there currently is no link to home providers, right? Yeah. And we and we know there ain't any houses, as Susan said, there ain't no houses out there to be able to, you know, often in our smaller communities transition into some kind of a temporary accommodation facility. Is it appropriate or would it be something that could be looked at to be able to strengthen a relationship with a local individual motel in community that we know don't access are not a link to home provider and refuse to be a link to home provider. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So we've kept that reforming TA very open because we yeah. know it 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 varies. The city's very different from even say Newcastle and Wollongong, and then you go west of the Blue Mountains and it gets yep. different. And the further yep. west you go, the different it gets. What yep. we want. So you'll see in the guidelines that very clearly says some of this is about maybe capital works 
changing yeah. locks on doors, that sort of thing. Um, but maybe some of it is actually about support to people who are in TA and that might be in a commercial provider or a non-commercial provider. So if the proposal is about a different arrangement or a provision of support, absolutely that fits that in that area because we're not just looking about changing cost and demand, but we are looking to improve the outcomes people get if they are in TA. Okay. So if you've got a proposal that says actually there is no TA in this area for these reasons and we think we can overcome it in this way, that for us is improving our TA service delivery and absolutely would meet um, the, the point of the program and then it would just be assessed in terms of those other assessment criteria. Okay, got it. Suzanne, yeah. So following up from Dale's, you know, comment, particularly for regional, rural, that don't have, you know, in a housing crisis and that. So I wouldn't do it, but just putting it out there for others that might do, might consider it or just, you know, to see if that's something that could be done. Because like you're saying, different arrangements could be made depending on location, that sort of stuff. So would subleasing be one option? Uh, it, it's oh, entirely place of a direct no, 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 no. I'm just I can't say that one arrangement would be better or worse than another. Yeah. It really yeah. comes down to um, the viability of that, and you explain that in your proposal. If that's the yeah. bit, if that's how you access accommodation that is of, of reasonable quality um, and it's financially viable, absolutely, whatever arrangements you have available to you. And one of the assessment criteria is about how your proposal addresses either a particular a particular cohort, be that um, a characteristic of people presenting or location. So we are aware that um, uh, there might be different cost factors um, in regional compared to metro. So we have highlighted in the assessment criteria about you might have target cohorts or you might have regional factors that you're addressing through your proposal. Right, Penny. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm also going off the back of Dale's question. So, uh, are you proposing? I don't know um, what what Dale was saying really, but in regards to the motel having, because we have clients that come through that aren't um, eligible for TA for various reasons. Um, same as everyone would know that. Um, could you apply for like a pot of money that's used for TA only so you could um, use that to pay for the motels for the night um, over the course of a year or? Mm. Like brokerage. Yeah, like, oh, like a brokerage. Yeah, yep. no, I'm yeah. just thinking through how it's worded in the guidelines. Um, you absolutely can apply to provide mm -hmm. TA. How you provide that would be up to what you include in the proposal. So whether you um, have the accommodation yourself or are accessing accommodation through another provider, those absolutely are, are models mm -hmm. that fit within the, the options. It's really for you to then explain um, how yours um, provides um, adequate support, um, how it's value for money, how it addresses a particular gap um, in the service provision. Um, and if, if you can do that, absolutely. It's, it's really all models of delivery, all ways of making it work. Um, we're absolutely open to hearing about. It's, it, it will come down to, does that work if you've only got 12 months of funding? Do you want to give it a go? Absolutely, that's great. Um, and um, is it? How does it compare cost-wise or support-wise to what's currently there? If there's nothing currently there, then you're already an improvement on it. So um, I really do encourage you. The Smarty Grants process is have a go. It's really just filling in some boxes, answering some questions. It's a, quite a straightforward one. Um, and what we're hoping is that you'll you'll what you can articulate today is almost enough to complete the grants forms. Um, so have a go at completing it, see how it goes, um, put in some more information about what you think the cost would be and also what you might wanna charge if there was a nightly rate you were charging as in if we book people in, is there an additional nightly charge you wanted to um, charge um, us? On, on that, Kim, would you have to be a specialist homeless service provider? 
So to be eligible, you need to either be already a registered ACHP, mm -hmm. CHP or an accredited SHS or be willing and able to achieve accreditation or registration. So um, there's some links on the, in, on the website to what we mean by SHS accreditation. You also have the option to partner with one of those in the area um, and have them be the lead applicant um, if, you're, if your organisation isn't quite ready to do either of those processes. Okay. All right, we're a um, registered um, housing provider, but not a specialist. There you go. Oh, so that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's absolutely okay. So it's one or the other. You don't need to be both, yeah, but so. for both grants programs, we'll take anybody that's a registered CHP or a registered ACHP or an accredited SHS provider. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sky's very busy in the chat, um, adding extra information. So do um, check the links there after the meeting. It's um, the links to that publicly available information, but it's much quicker to find um, with Sky. But if you do have questions and feel like you can't answer them, I can't ask them, um, please do put them in the chat there. Dale, do you have a, a follow up question then? Um, obviously, it was uh, sparked a few other questions. Was that a complete enough answer or did you? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. That's pretty well what I wanted to hear because I, I kind of felt as though purchasing TA from commercial providers was, was really mm. outside of the scope of this, um, of, of this of this sort of grant, and I was more concerned about those communities where we don't have any home for home providers. So you pretty well answered all of that. Yeah, and the okay, fact that we can work great. in partnership with um, ACHPs as well, I think, is a good one as well. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So open to all of those categories or organisations that are in the process of achieving accreditation or registration. You don't have to be all the way through the process yet to be eligible. They they just need to be one member of a of a partnership. Um, and really, it, it's some of that assessment criteria, it's not just about dollars. It's not just about having the accommodation. There are definitely assessment criteria that look at both the amenity of a service but also the support that's available to people who are in temporary accommodation that's part of our reform is to improve it we know it's a terrible place to be in most temporary accommodation at the moment um, and it's very um, luck of the draw as to um, how it feels to be there and we want to improve that across the board penny yes follow-up questions i love them This is actually from Natasha, who's next to me. Okay, um, so I just wanted to know, can you go for both tranches? Yes, go for both both programs and you can submit <clears throat> as many as you like. So if you have an idea that you're kind of not sure which way to go, put two versions of it in at the same time. You can do that. Um, if you are not successful in that first assessment period, um, we will be giving general briefings in preparation for the next round of assessment. Put it in again, um, update it. Um, if you submitted it elsewhere, um, like through a community housing innovation fund, there's no, there's no limit to um, submitting proposals so long as they haven't been successful in other programs, of course. Um, but there's no limit to how many you put in. You, there's no limit to how similar they are. Um, there's no limit to putting the same proposal in both streams if you're not sure which one it fits better just put it into both um, we do recommend it's an online form but you could prepare your answers in a word document and then cut and paste them across and then go do the other form cutting and pasting across as well that's my tip for how to handle internet forms so that you're not having to redo the work if there is similarities or crossover between proposals. Yes, but no limits. Um, the two grant programs will be assessed completely individually. We have separate assessment panels for the two. So they will be looking at a submission for their grant program. So reforming TA, they will be looking at it against the reforming TA criteria um, and how it stacks up against that. A different group of people will be running the assessment for um, with the separate assessment criteria for the service reform and innovation fund. Hey Kim, I've got another question. Is that okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, I, I, and, and the way I'm, I'm even asking, this is going to be confusing because, you know, I'm not a CHP or an ACHP, so I, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of being a housing provider. But if you yeah. were in your, and tell me if I'm, you're not allowed to answer this, but in, in the proposal, if you, have a ha if you have a house that's under Land and Housing Corp, for instance, so it's probably more a CHP, I suppose, that you wanted to repurpose under this project as a transitional accommodation or a crisis accommodation, what hoops would you need to jump through with Land and Housing Corp, for instance, to be able to have that property then reallocated as a transitional property, I believe they, I believe it. You can't just repurpose properties. Is that true? Is that correct? Um, it, some of it depends mm. on the on the zoning for a property, yep. as well as what um, housing portfolio have uh, like in terms of their yeah. intentions for the property. So um, those decisions, as it would be for any owner of any type of property, um, whether housing portfolio own the property or. Um, a non-government organisation own it. Um, the the process for this grant is the same. Is that if if the owner is not a part of the proposal, you can get um you can go and seek in principle support of the proposal and include that. It is one of the questions of if you are not the owner, do you have support from the owner for the proposal? The other piece is, is if there's um time frames required like if there's a DA involved or other work you need to make that clear in the proposal because it does become a component of can you do this within the time frame you say you can if it's dependent on then going and getting a whole lot of um, assessments done or DAs or other approval processes we just need to note that in the submission so we can be clear on what's a realistic time frame but if you own a property if you use a property that is owned by AHO housing portfolio a CHP of some kind um, the process would be usually to approach them see um, if they agree with the proposal um, and then um, submit the proposal with that um, in principle support provided okay thanks Suzanne hello I was actually just going to answer Dale's question for us. Oh, good. Us Go for it, please. As, as, a, as a community housing provider that has land and housing court properties that are also transitional properties as well. So if we want to change from, you know, if the neighbourhood's had enough, and we have a vacant general property, then we can just simply go to them and say that we want to change and recategorise our properties. We do the same with AHO as well. So we just put a letter of request in to, you know, what the property is, what you, you know, you want to recategorise it to. So it's not a big process. You just send it to um, DCJ's community, um, community housing team that looks after the Lenton Housing Corp. Properties. Hey Susan, is it is there a cost to do that at all? No. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. No, you just put That's it good. in writing. Yeah, yeah, you just put it in writing and ask them if they would be interested to recategorize their property. AHO is doing a um now too for um different properties from social to affordable and getting into the crisis and transitional. Hence why they've just released a new policy on that. So. You know, if you're working with any of the providers up there, then you could probably get, um, you know, get them to actually write to AHO and ask them to recategorise. Yeah, thanks for that. Sounds like awesome. it's definitely worth asking whoever the owners of your buildings around yeah. you are. Definitely worth asking um, and seeing if they'll either provide in principle support or if there's a process that they need you to go through. And I mean, obviously, they've yes. got to be vacant properties. So not only that, and we all know AHO currently has quite a lot of vacant properties. So, you know, it's worth a worth a try to get them recategorised since everybody's got the same priorities to um, house people. Yeah, for sure. Right. Okay. More questions? Clarifications? either about the process, about the assessment criteria. Also, I just want to say Smarty Grants is probably one of the easiest portals to do too if people have never used them before. So okay. it, is, right. it is one of the easiest tender portals 
and we use a lot because we do a lot of things. So, but um, Smarty Grants is actually quite easy to to do and navigate. And I think right. it's we only like two hundred and fifty words for most of the the answers as well. So it's 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 um very short. Yeah, it definitely limits. Um, certainly, it's not like. Um, going out and spending money on tender writers is necessarily going to help you in this process because it is quite limited answers. Um, I think last we looked, we had about um, we had about we had quite a number of proposals that have been sitting half done for a period. So that's the other thing you can do is go in and register, start your proposal, see what the sorts of questions are, save it, go away, think about it, get some more information, come back and and update it. So you can keep doing that right up to um, we're going to um, close off this round of assessment on the 31st of October. But as I said, if you submit yours on the 1st of November, it doesn't get left out. It just gets assessed later. So please do go and have a fiddle with the system. If you put a proposal and you get halfway through and you think you've done it wrong, it's just going to get moved into um, outside the eligibility criteria and you can just put another one in because there is no limit. So please do have a go and work through the system. Um, there is the team, um, the partnerships team, um, all their contact information, they can help you with the actual, um, there's portal help, there's a grant, the process help available, and then there's also our SHS programs team who are happy to um, provide things like FAQs. So. There's help in lots of different directions, but please do go and, and familiarise yourself with the process. Don't feel afraid that you're going to muck it up in some way because you can just keep submitting uh, and that's completely fine. You won't be penalised in any way for putting in five submissions that all look fairly similar um, because it took you five goes to feel like you had it right. That's completely fine. There's no, there's no um, impact of doing that. Suzanne, you're on mute. You come off mute. Sorry, I just sorry, I do have something because I was just thinking, you Good. know, because yep. if we were to apply for this, whichever stream, you know, if it's something that, you know, will possibly align with the half as well. And, you know, would you guys see that as a, you know, it just definitely can't be done in partnership or, you know, there's opportunity to run you know, these things, because there's one now, one in February, then one in May, and they have sort of, you know, well, it's targeting crisis and transitional accommodation at the moment, so. Yes, so those Commonwealth processes are very separate from us. Um, yeah. We absolutely want New South Wales to do as well as we can, and so there's support um, processes for both the NIF and the HAF and every other um, mm. acronym the government comes up with for those, yes. So the support processes for those applications that if you've got things ready to go, um, Homes wants to be um, supporting those applications, they would they are though completely separate from this process like, because yeah, we have I know no way to kind of link separate, up. But, you know, yep. sometimes we can go for state funding as well as Commonwealth and they bolster, you know, a, 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 a significant project sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah. Yep. So I think but, um, so. probably those are more appropriate for um, we will be running um, further CHIFs, so the Community Housing Innovation yeah. Fund, which is yeah. that much more capital focused process. Yeah. Um, we will be, homes will be running more of those over the next um, year or so um, and absolutely trying to work those in with the Commonwealth funding. Um, okay. But in terms of this, this is really sort of a um, short and sweet, like get it going one um, that we, we we don't want to hold that up by trying to align with too many other grants processes because um, there'll be organisations where those bigger grants processes or Commonwealth grants processes um, aren't, aren't accessible for you. And so we really do want this to be for those, um, a, a different set of proposals really. Nice. Hey, Kim, just one very quick question. Um, yeah. And I don't know, this might actually be to Jesse maybe or yourself, but you're rec recording this session. Will you guys be sending that out? I'm just thinking of, um, yeah, whether I'm able to share it with one of our community partners that couldn't be here today. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to put it on our um, Homes New South Wales website. Um, when we have the website that it's like the location, we'll add it to the um 
where all the guidelines are and we'll um, certainly let this group, so Homelessness New South Wales will send that information out um, to the same invite list they used for this, but it will also be publicly available. So um, I'm not sure, it usually takes us a week or two to get it up online, um, but it will be available. So we'll get that through to you as quickly as we can. And I can but send the recording yeah, to you later after this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Okay, we've got lots of time. So do, if you want to just ask a question, please do. Okay, well, we may close it off. If you, um, as I said, if you, um, we will be updating the frequently asked questions. So we'll go through the questions that were asked today and check whether we um, are already addressing those sorts of things in the frequently asked questions. If there's new questions that have come in, we'll update those frequently asked questions. They're available on the website. Um, so do look out for those. The recording will be available. If you have questions about the process, um, there's emails for you to access there. Um, if you can't find them, just ask Jessie. Um, she'll send it through. Um, or if you have questions about the, more around the actual what's the grants for, um, you can ask the SHS programs team and Sky's very helpfully just put the email for that in the chat there. So SHS program at homes.newsouthwales.gov. If you're not sure, just please do ask the question. We'll be very clear if we can't answer it or we'll send you to where um, you may be able to get some answers for it. We really do want people to have a go at this um, and then we will be learning very much from the sorts of proposals we get, how um, easy it is to engage in the process, and we'll make adjustments for future rounds of the Homelessness Innovation Fund. Um, so thank you for um, time today. Do ask follow-up questions through those mechanisms if you want to. Um, and um, yeah, just thank you for the time and thank you for the questions. It's been really helpful. I think between you, particularly um, Dale and Suzanne, you've asked questions that have helped the rest of the group have answers. So. Um, thank you for thinking those through and asking them. It's much appreciated. Jesse, anything thank else you. we need to do to close off? No, just thank you again to you, Kim, and to your team for coming and doing this today. Um, and thanks to everyone for coming. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. See ya. Thank you.